Okay, we are going to do a thoracic spine and rib evaluation. Um, basically, regular history forms. In, in history, we're going to make sure that we ask, you know, how long it's been, um, what makes it worse, what makes it better, just the traditional everything that you would do in, a, in the eval. And then some of the things, definitely look at the medical history, particularly with breathing issues, asthma, any also GI stuff that could get in the way of some of that, and um, difficulty breathing. So that would be now or history of, of it. Um, and once you go through the history, um, you know, when do you notice it, any particular things. And so, for example, if there's ever any rib pain that is sort of from here up, I always think of it, always look at the shoulder. If it's anything that's more lower, like the floating ribs and stuff, definitely take a, take a closer look to the lumbar spine and ribs. Uh, so for purposes of today's uh, demonstration, we're going to do more upper, upper, upper ribs. And so we're going to clear... So we're going to clear the cervical spine. So we're going to just sort of a quick range of motion, cervical spine in all directions. Good. Um, hmm. And then so feet flat on the floor. I always ask people to, when I test that thoracic spine, feet flat on the floor, sometimes people can shift how they do. The other thing that I will do just to keep cheating from happening is I'll say, um, Grab that foam roller and yeah, grab the foam roller and then squeeze that with, without me falling, between the knees. Um, there's a smaller one flying around or a pillow or something like that so that the hips aren't making a difference. So we'll just have you up nice and tall, hands like this, and you're going to rotate one way and rotate the other way. And we can see you do that one more time. There's a subtle rotation and she's doing a little bit of cheating. So sometimes I'll, I'll put my knees against them and, and so don't let your knees push against mine. Now Aisha here's got a baby in there so probably makes a difference. I like to use, when I'm sitting here and I have the mirror over there, I will also be able to see from the side whether or not people are rotating here or here, because that'll make a difference in how that spine is um, mobilizing one and the other. So um, then the next thing we want to definitely check out is I'm going to have you stand up, and we're just going to check arm range of motion all the way up and down. We're going to look at scapular rhythm and down, OK? And then just relax, no, just relax, and sort of where where the scapula are because that'll impact what's going on and the forces on the spine. First rib. I like to check the first rib seated, so go ahead and sit down. So if there's any issues with the shoulders, we certainly go a little bit further with that. All right, deep breath. And exhale. This is another great place when you ask for a deep breath. Most often than not, people will... Take a deep breath and it'll be upper, upper, um, upper thoracic breath and cervical breath and accessory muscular breath. So it's another good opportunity to put that aside and remember, oh, okay, I wonder if they can do diaphragmatic breath if they're having rib issues or pain. The other thing that I would like to see sometimes, I'm going to have you hold on to this one. Just kind of hold on to it like that so we don't, we don't have that in the way is I like to go from behind, and sometimes I'll go directly at the skin, and uh, I'll look. So go ahead and rotate as far as you can, just to sort of take a better look and see, is there a place where things are getting jammed, especially if they are call, um, complaining of symptoms? And go the other way. Oh, that's a bit different on this side, isn't it? Go the other way. Uh-huh, right? And I can see how it's more right here that it's kind of something locked up on you. Yep. Good. Have you had issues? No. Okay. All right. The kids were just kicking me all night long. So. <laughs> the kids? The outside ones, not the inside ones. <laughs> okay. 
all right. So let me have you look down as far as you can and curl into a little ball. So one way we look at range here, then we can have her in standing. Her, her restrictions are a little bit more lower. And then from here, bring that chest up. And I like to see sometimes clothes are in the way. Just kind of put my hands on the sternum just to see where things are and where they follow. Good. Come back to the center. Good. From here, um, we're going to do, if uh, you can do a quick, if, if there's issues, referred pain or anything like that, we can do a quick um, arm strength measurement, certainly. You can take this away. Um, if there's lower lumbar stuff, we can do um, hip strength from here as well. Um, and so for your sake, let me see you stand up. On the car. Go this way. Bend forward as far as you can. Oh, yeah. You got quite the little stuff happening here. Uh -huh. Come back up. Yeah, you're all kind of a little stuck here. Mm -hmm. And then, let me see a little back bend. Oh my goodness, Bendy. <laughs> Hormones. I used to hate back, back bending. Yeah, there's just definitely something here. Yeah. Now, um, you can relax. We're not going to make Aisha go on her belly because. I, I can't, it's for a few minutes. Oh my God, no. That would be really weird. Okay. <laughs> um, but you're going to, no, but that's okay. Okay. But one of the things that we definitely want to check is scapular strength. So. Um, so go for it. I'll be the right. patient now. And you're going to, since we're going to continue. Are you sure? Cause I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want to make sure that you have scapular strength and spine mobility and anything else that you can think of that you would want to know for a thoracic pain and the you, I mean, you've covered the other things I would have checked. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So we did the seated stuff. We did the standing, and that's when we did the stuff. And okay. So we come here. All right. Let's see if we can get this shoulder to set back up here. Can you hold that up for me? Okay. Hold it. Hold it. Good. I'm gonna bring that. Bring this back up here. We're gonna go out just a little bit. Hold that there. Good. And we would do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna check PA mobs. And right there, it does not like to move very much. Yeah, what is up with that? Ooh. Um, so be sure, I think I can hear myself here. Yes. So be sure that you're testing the central and unilateral. And it's especially, too, if there's rib pain, you can then go and check the costal vertebral joints. Um, sometimes the scapula is in the way, so you can bring the arm out to really get a better look um, that way. Uh, but oftentimes, when you work on the thoracic spine, if there's rib pain, that'll correct itself and you won't have to mess with that. Do you have any pain here? It's a little tight. I have all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because your spinous process is there, transverses. In oh, there. cool. This is right That's why I'm all stuck. On that rib. That, yeah, well, we were going to go off camera, and <laughs> you were going to work on me, too. But so if we bring this um, arm up a little bit, mm -hmm. I should move that more out of the way, and I have more access here. Perfect. Can you bring this arm up as well? I'm just going to check the other side mm -hmm. of that. And there's still a similar restriction on both sides. So you're checking joints, and at the same time, you can check uh, Is that hard at all? It's a little funky. Yeah, both both sides, right underneath. Mm -hmm. A little funky is correct. Mm -hmm. It's a technical term, right? Yes. Funky, crunchy, rice crispy-ish. Yes. 
Um, so while I'm evaluating, I also begin to treat. You can just go right into treatment. There's no need to pause. Just find something, work on it. Unless you want to, you know, really are trying to find a pre and post or any other reason why you don't realize you're going to do that. Yeah. Sometimes if they're having pain with breath, I will have them inhale and exhale while I do it. Take a deep inhale for me. Exhale. A tiny little crack there. Inhale. Do one more here. Inhale. Got something. How's that feel? Better. All right. Demonstration and treatment. All right. So the other thing that I like to test from here is going through and putting your hands alongside the ribs and asking for a deep breath. Yeah, so try it. So you're going to put your hands. So as you're treating, you can actually sometimes, yep, stand, even though it might be a little ticklish, find your hands and kind of, you can put them in the um Intercostal, in yep, in the ribs. The idea is that we want to look at how much are the ribs moving out and in. And this is a great position to do it in because the belly, if it uh, if it does a diaphragmatic breath, the belly is going to stop and it's going to force the air out. So it's going to give you a good idea of like, are your ribs laterally translating more on one side than the other? Are they not moving at all? Um. So depends on what's going on. All right, let's give it a shot. A couple deep breaths from the belly. And you can use your hands as tactile feedback, like go ahead and push into my hands to get people to press and do more lateral breathing or rib flaring. You just don't want to move. <laughs> I'm not yeah, feeling I'm, a whole lot on either side. No, I know, because like, I'm also having a little issue. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, but it's okay. It, okay. Th that's, actually, that's actually, that's why I wanted to, it reminds me of what we need to talk on, about. Okay. And you're going to get a chance to, so we did the joints, do the soft tissue stuff. Yeah, too. you almost seem like you're, you're going all, your expansion is coming all from your lower ribs instead of like right up here yeah. in the cage itself where we yeah. should be getting more lateral expansion on this side and we're not, you're, mm -hmm. you're going through here. Yeah. And so with with that in mind, and it seems as though um, that was more lower thoracic and that's when you would want to go and check lumbar spine. If it's a little bit more restricted upper thoracic, then that's more cervical spine. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is when you are doing scapular strength testing, resist it at the scapula. Because when you're resisting it at the hand, the rear deltoid is certainly acting. So let's try it again, and you're going to resist that at the scapula. Don't forget the lower trap. So... We have this one. I don't. I don't. Oh, I I test it, and I have people bring their arms up just to have an idea. Like, are they? Can they even do this? Most people really can't. Um, right, so mm -hmm. let's have you come up like so, mm -hmm. and right yep. here. Yep. Just okay. go right on the scapula and hold for me, and let nice. go this hand. This hand doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So really, just hold. from there. Different, Good. right? Yeah. Plus the yeah. lever arms different, so. Correct. Yep. And you're not really doing that. So then the other one I do is that one, okay. right? And you can even just have people go, and I'm going to do it on this side yeah. just so, to, for purposes of showing. Thumb up to make sure, like, are they lifting? Are they shrugging here? Are they able to hold it? Can you lift it all the way up? And are they shaking like this, or is it slowly dropping? And then you resist at the scapula here yep. as well. same thing. Yeah. So ready? We'll yep, let's move right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you can see that I actually know how to put my scapula yeah. in place. 
She's done this a few times. Yeah. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. So think about it's not so much of a PA. It's more of a you're gliding that scapula okay. laterally. Yes. Okay. There we go. That's different. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then lower trap, you're going to come over here. Can they even lift their arms? Well, at least one at a time. Can they lift it off the table? Yeah. Or are they shrugging? And most of the people I find, they can, they're like, what? You want me to what? That was me try, on the last video. <laughs> they, they try to do it with their upper trap. Yeah. They don't realize that. It's like, oh, go ahead. And now, yep, same thing. Now you can really resist that. Uh-huh. And you're going to go kind of like towards where the arm is. Yeah. Ooh, that was tired. Sorry. <laughs> um, but that's. That's a little bit more of where you want to resist that scapular stuff. Um, so if it's a little bit lower, kind of like what Aisha just found on me, then you want to do some lumbar stuff and look at the hip a little bit closer. If it's a little bit higher, the other thing, you know, we looked at the the uh, rib movement from um, from prone, then also look at it from supine. So. From here, you can kind of put your ribs right underneath. What's best position for me? So, side, like perpendicular to you, or? Um, I actually like from the top from the of top? the from the head of the bed. Okay. Yeah. Mhm. Mm All right. Yeah. Okay. You might want to raise the table, table a little just bit. <laughs> Be closer to you. Yeah. So, so sometimes I'll do it from the top because I'll lower myself to where my head. My eye level is right here, and then I can even see it. Because sometimes it's hard to feel, especially when someone doesn't move that much. And coaching that can be challenging when people have trouble, like, what do you mean? I'm breathing. It's my belly. It's like, yeah, but I want you to breathe from here. A 360 breath mm -hmm. instead of... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Sorry. People that are ticklish, too, can be tough. <laughs> okay, take so. a deep breath for me. Yeah, so find yourself kind of like, yeah, as, it doesn't really matter which way you have your hands, just trying to find that you can put your hands in each space or on each rib. That feels pretty good. And then some people will know how to breathe. Some people will breathe through the sternum. Um, you do better with the exhale than the inhale. Yeah, so it depends. And, and again, same thing, soft tissue stuff. You can find any kind of soft tissue restrictions we talked about when you were in prone. And from here, think about all the soft tissue stuff, not to mention all the lymph nodes. But so all the soft tissue that can get caught up under, right in this, in the ribs, through the obliques, that can be restrictive in nature. Um, think about, too, when you're looking at scapula and shoulder, how much of that serratus anterior is getting in the way of the movement of the ribs because of all the fascia that can get all caught up. That's usually not pretty fun for people to work on. Ooh, that side doesn't feel good on me. <laughs> um, um, so that was that. So we got strength. Of course, um, we talked about... Uh, Bring you down a little bit. Oh, thank you. Yes, I think so my head doesn't get all chopped up. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up in, in something that I'm going to keep this video more ortho related um, because there's a few things that I want to make sure that I don't get wrong. And when you're looking at uh, nerve involvement because you have the, um, the chain, the, the long thoracic nerve and all that. Yeah, not the long thoracic nerve. No, the uh, sympathetic chain right along the side. Um, that's definitely something to keep in mind as you're moving things and if, if they are having pain and sort of where uh, that sympathetic chain comes down um, and if there's any of the other symptoms. That's why I was asking about earlier if there's any other 
symptoms, um, that can be a thing. Um, and yeah, so when you look at stiffness, shoulders and scapula can certainly be involved. Um, hip, pelvis can definitely be involved. And so it depends on, on your findings. Cool. Cool beans. So for now, um, so your plan of care would involve, depending, there's, there's a significant amount of uh, stress that can be coming from the lack of scapular strength on the thoracic spine. We just had somebody recently, uh, a runner, and he has pretty kyphotic. And so he had a lot of pain with running. And it's like, well, his scapula had no stability because they were just sort of his thoracic musculature was just kind of holding onto his arms. So just getting him to engage his scapula eliminated his pain from running just because now it wasn't sitting on that spine, but it was more on the, on the thoracic, on the, with the muscles of the, of the shoulders. So that's a big one. Um, anything else you can think of? Question wise, and um, for folks that have gone through a lot of like abdominal trauma, like mm -hmm. surgeries, like not just C sections, but we've yes. got folks that have had liver transplants or other mm -hmm. abdominal surgeries, right. post mastectomy, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And to see a lot of restrictions, not only in the abdominal cavity, but through the mm -hmm. obliques and depending on where they got popped yes. from. So, what exactly. are the considerations that we need to be aware of? Some of those folks, depending, like for example, I've had liver transplants. Uh, lung surgeries too, you may want to test them in sideline. Because when they're in sideline, come on over. When they're in sideline, it's going to be nice. Give Aisha a nice little pillow. <laughs> when in sideline, all the organs and babies roll off to the side. <laughs> so this is a nice way. I kind of like this one coming over here. Sometimes that takes up some of the tension. Can you give me a deep breath? Yes, and exhale. And this, you can give some tactile feedback to where you want the movement to happen. Nice. And you can check and see if there's a difference one versus the other. Good. And then just relax. And you can grab some of the um, obliques. Not grab them. Just touch them <laughs> and see if there's any restrictions. You have these floating ribs right here. Um, but follow the ribs along and check to see if there's any issues. As you come up here, that's this is where I was saying you can find all the restrictions from the serratus. And you may need to bring this down just to take some of the tension off of it so you can feel a little bit better. Um, obviously, if there's the other thing is if, if there's rib pain, you can find out if there's any um, pain in the front. So palpating the ribs along the sternum. The sternocostal joints um, can give you an idea of what of the level because you were touching around back there, and if I actually come right here on myself, I find that ooh tender. That's really tender, and I didn't even know it was that tender. Yeah, so it can also give you a cue on like, huh, if the back's all jacked up and everything's tight, going through the front can give you a better idea of what level can you find, and perhaps you work above or below that level. So from here, I find that this is a nice place to do soft tissue work. I can go upper from here. Soft tissue comes off to the side, and you can work through the pecs. And then from here, this is where we can kind of come here off to the side and do uh, periscapular type rib intercostals, um, soft tissue stuff. What about um, like a post-clavicle uh, fracture? Clavicular fracture... I wouldn't be doing all this stuff, definitely, although we would want them to see if how they were breathing, um, but I wouldn't really. It depends. So I had a, a cyclist with clavicular and uh, rib fractures that we did all this stuff to, but not until that clavicle was healed and the, the fractures were healed that we, we were then able to move all this stuff. This is also a nice position to sort of get a little bit of... Uh, distraction through the lower spine just to create some more space for you to work through the ribs over here that's a little tight back here yep mm -hmm. that's crunched up on that side most of the night yeah so this is a nice way to try to get things to come on open 
And then you can test if there's some thoracic stuff, you can come over. Let me have you roll the other side, Aisha, please. You can come alongside. Good. Yep, you're good. And create some movement from here, right? So find the spot that you want to move and you can work. I have, I like to put um, their legs on mine sometimes, whether it's one or two, then I feel like I definitely have the person. Um, and I didn't necessarily want to move your arm and rotate you. I could if I wanted to, but I'm just sort of testing the lower thoracic movement. It's a little sticky in here. Mm -hmm. There's a baby. Things are a little weird, so I'm not really messing with that too much. Um, if you wanted to do more thoracic rotation or movement of the thoracic spine, like for example, you were actually uh, stiffer to the other side. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. When you rotated to the left. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have thought it was the opposite. Yeah? Yeah. Now we have to test again. again. Come on up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, you want to block my knees real quick? Okay. Block the knees. All right. Good. Let's see. Rotate. See how much she cheats? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Go the other way. Yeah, that felt super stiff. I'm going to. That's way more. Yeah. So going to the to right. Going yes. to my right. You're right. right. You're right. So let's get on this side. Mm -hmm. And this is where I might. Now, that was because it was here, right? So this is where we can create a little movement here. And then we can create the rotation. Can I have this mm -hmm. arm? Good. Relax. She wants to help all the time. Just relax. And create a little gapping. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So just a little bit from here to just create some movement. I'll put her legs on mine. Just because when it's on my legs, then I can kind of create that movement if I wanted to. Give me a deep breath. And exhale. I'm not manipulating. I'm just creating a little bit of extra space. The other thing is you can take the joints to the end range and you can just have them do deep breaths. That's it. And exhale. Good. You can come from here. You can address it, relax it. Assist it, I mean. There we go. Mm hmm. That's it. Following it along, this is another place where I really like to work with movement. I'll move the leg, mobilization with movement, kind of more soft tissue stuff when it gets to those lower thoracic segments. It's a little sticky right there. Oh, yeah, that's a little tight. I would say that part of it might be why you're restricted. Yeah. And that movement is all this stickiness. Deep breath. And exhale. Good. Yep. Yeah, just being addressing what's needed. Just because it's not part of the thoracic spine doesn't mean we're not going to help her out. So, again, for your patience. All right. So, take your time. Sit up. Let's find out. Mm-hmm. President of Cheaters are mm -hmm. us. Yes. <laughs> Ready? Go for it. That was the good one. Hmm. Not as bad. There's still, still a little, little bit of resistance. Yeah. So the other thing, another, and I usually won't use the, the what I'm going to show you, the mobilization with movement on the first day, just because there's a lot of other stuff going on. But it'll say, oh, you know what? For the next time, I'm going to have Aisha do... A mobilization with movement in seated. Have you done this one? I don't think so. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to straddle the table. Straddle literally, the table. yep, because we want to block the pelvis and the hips. Okay. And we want to assist right rotation. So you're going to hug the pillow. And it depends on the side, if you want to get side bend or if you want to get just the rotation. But we know we want to kind of go from here and roll a little bit more kind of Yes. And so the idea here is we are assisting her to get movement to the right. So Do I need to be flat or leave it the way? Nope, it okay. doesn't matter. They're really more for me. The height. 
the, you are already locked up in there. You're not going to go anywhere. If you are super bendy, it's not a big deal. So um, the pillow is more for um, decency or I forget what the, the word is. Modesty. Modesty. Thank you. More for modesty and you're not like whatever if it's guys or girls and you can kind of come over the pillow. Um, I tend to come this way. And so I kind of found it was more from here and coming this way. I use my leg as leverage. I'll lock my elbow. And then depending on whether she lacked flexion or extension or where I saw she was locking, locking, um, Aisha tends to lock and like always that hyper lor lumbar lordosis through here. So I'm going to have you just kind of come down. And I can just do a little testing on how it feels under my hand. And I can just feel this here. So you're going to take a deep breath. The hand here can hold the scapula and exhale. Uh -huh. And then you can mobilize with movement. Inhale back. And then change the segment and sunk it, sink in. I'm going to get a little side bend here. I'm just going by feel. Last one. Inhale. That one's a little tender. And exhale. Good. Come back to the center. Bring those feet back over this way. So get out of that crazy locked position. I'm going to test again. For purposes of positioning, I may have you have there so our audience can see the same angle. Good. Ready? Go for it. Oh, she just goes for it. I know. Go for it. How's that feel? Better than before. There's still just a little bit, and I would probably go a little bit more lower lumbar. Ready? You're going to stay right there. And so if this were the case, I would want, is it all right if I pull up? Yep. I would want to see skin. When I'm doing some of these, or as close to skin, or, or I'll just, if skin is not possible, I'll put my hands to feel the spinous process. Ready? Go for it. Uh huh. And then we can see, like, oh, yep, yeah, right in here. What you might have tenderness with is where you're overcompensating for it. But I see, I can kind of feel that this is the segment that is a little bit more stuck. So, um, so that's another one that I would do on a follow-up. If nothing that we've done helps out, um, and then we can just sort of see uh, that little extra lordosis, that might be helpful. Um, so yeah, so for thoracic pain and rib, you gotta correct, correct the thoracic spine first and then address the rib. You can't really go for the rib and then some, oftentimes, the majority of the time, it's the thoracic spine. Um, and then finding out the soft tissue limitations throughout, uh, addressing them, a nice kinesio tape, because this some of this part in here can be really, really sensitive. A good kinesio tape, and um, you're good to go. Sounds good. If you have any questions, be sure to let us know. Bye. Adios.